Uh, hi everyone. Good evening to all of you. Uh, so good to see all of you. And uh, we are just going to begin uh, this series and uh, this series of our kinsman uh, redeemer, as what uh, Pastor Susan mentioned just now. The studies from the book of Ruth, and today is the first session, and we're going to look specifically. Uh, onto Ruth chapter 1. But first, uh, we are going to look into uh, what is the meaning yeah, of uh, uh, kinsman redeemer. Uh, kinsman redeemer basically is a close male relative. It can be a brother or an uncle who has the responsibility or privilege to intervene and help another relative in need or danger. So example is the property buyback, uh, to rescue relative who was sold into slavery or facing some uh, sort of hardship. So today, uh, Jesus is our closest relative to God, where he redeemed us into God's own family by bringing us to himself through the finished work on the cross. And that's actually our new covenant, right? Correct or not? Okay, so let's carry on. Uh, I thought we should also know what is the purpose of this study that we are going through, okay? The first thing is that uh, we sh all should learn that we are going to trust God in times of adversity, okay? So the emphasis here is to trust God, uh, turn to Him in challenging times, uh, or maybe sometimes hopeless uh, situation uh, instead of uh, a hasty decision or a decision that is out of fear, uh? Secondly, is that we also need to know uh, by studying this, uh, 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 the book of Ruth, is that there is actually an importance uh, in our choices and our actions. Uh, and it carries significant consequences, both for ourselves and also for our children and our children's children, you know. So as we look into today, I hope that uh, we, we can learn to make thoughtful decision-making uh, through his word uh, and prayerfully also, okay? And the last but not least is to understand, you know, and to also appreciate God's grace, uh, his deliverance and the redemption also. You know, it's despite our failures, our poor choices uh, in life, uh, so we have to be certain and to be assured that when we seek God's help, he shows us, uh, he pours out his amazing grace, uh, deliverance, redemption. And the purpose is that also to transform uh, us and our circumstances from despair to abundance and especially also from shame uh, to honor. Amen? Okay? So the theme, the theme for today, today we are going to look into chapter one. The theme, first thing, two things. Uh, first thing is that the message is that uh, I want to uh, say is that don't flee from God. If there's anything that you learn today, uh, the, the thing that you're going to learn is that don't flee from God. And it's taken from verse one. Secondly, is that uh, we all should learn to turn to God. Huh? And the encouragement is that all is not lost. Uh, we're going to look into this uh, verse 1 and verse 6 later as we go through uh, chapter 1 later. All right. And also to know uh, that God's supernatural work is in the natural events. Huh? Many a times we, we we always look into, okay, I want supernatural, supernatural here, supernatural there. Huh? Miracle, 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 okay? But you know what? God works within the timeline of the natural events. Uh, he is able to turn uh, things uh, supernaturally, you know? Things happen, you know, around us. Things happen in our life, uh, uh, in our country or in the world. Uh, war, rumors of war, people shooting, you know? Uh, stabbing, all these things happen around us, you know. Uh, and sometimes it brings us down or maybe we are part of it and it puts us in a, in a moment of uh, difficulties. Uh, but you know what? Uh, God uses these things in our life to create supernatural results. So our part is to trust Him uh, in this process. Amen? Okay? Romans 8.28, the very famous verse, okay? Uh, in the contemporary English version, it says that we know that God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. They are the one God has chosen for his very purpose. Amen? Okay, so before we start, I thought that I want to pose uh, three questions and I want you all to think about it. Huh? Uh, and perhaps that you can reflect also upon your life and I pray 
that the Lord will minister to you as we go through, uh, as we read through this chapter verse by verse, that he will speak to your heart, you know, that uh, all is not lost, you know, that he is your redeemer. He is your kinsman redeemer. Amen. So the first question is that, are you facing challenges that are inescapable? Is there a famine in your life today? Is there a famine uh, that you know of someone that is going through also? Perhaps it's uh, with regards to relationship, finance, uh, a personal struggle, health situation. Is there a famine or, or things that it becomes uh, inescapable? Huh? And the second thing is that we want to also ask ourselves, in this trying time, do you hear from God? Uh, does he encourage you to persevere? Or is there, I put that temptation now, huh? is there a, 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 a temptation to say, okay, I'm going to give up. Uh, things are so hard pressed in my life today. You know, there, there are so many things that's going on, pressure here, stress here, you know, I just want to give up. The, th the third question and the last question is that, do you trust God? Uh, can you, or maybe I invite you to trust God, you know, that God uh, can work, that God is working for your good, even though you cannot see it happening. You know, there's a song, right? Uh, Waymaker, and the bridge goes that, uh, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. That's amazing, right? So, so let's maybe... Yeah, okay, so let's let's maybe start with a word of prayer, okay? Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, even at this moment, Father, I pray that uh, all of us that are here, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will minister to our hearts, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, reveal every part of us, part of us, part of our hearts, Lord, and uh, allow all these uh, elements, Lord, uh, to come to light, Lord. And as we avail ourselves as we surrender ourselves to you. I pray, Lord, that your word will encourage us, your word will speak to us. And in fact, there'll be a real transformation happening right now, today, Lord, as the seed is planted, Lord, uh, in our hearts, Lord. Thank you. We praise you and we uh, uh, thank you, Lord, for this moment, Lord. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's begin, okay? So it's good to begin with a background uh, of uh, what's happening. Uh, Ruth chapter 1, in fact, the whole book of Ruth begins with uh, there is a dark times. Uh, Israel is in dark times. And this is actually the uh, a little bit of a, a diagram to describe, you know, that uh, it is actually happening during the time of the judges, all right? You remember that... Uh, the children of Israel, after coming out from Egypt, they entered the promised land. Uh, of course, 40 years in the desert, uh, uh, Joshua and, 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 and them entered to the promised land. And then there was a division of land uh, and all have been assigned. Then they don't have king. Okay, so what happened is that uh, in that conquest also, there is also remnants of the enemy that they did not actually uh, annihilate, you know, did not even actually uh, uh, remove. Uh, and, 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 it got worse into intermarriage, you know. So, so, so this this condition is that uh, the the enemies uh, are gods, the pagan gods, uh, to which actually they subscribe to, and these are actually the the Amalekites, you know, the the the, the Ammonites, uh, the Moabites, you know, they worship the god of uh, Aseraph uh, and Baal, uh, and uh, and. And because of the intermarriage, uh, because of these remnants of people exist, because of the intermarriage, uh, they, uh, I'm talking about the Israelites, begin to also adopt cultures, begin to adopt uh, the principles, and they also worship. What's worse is that they went into worshipping uh, idolatry itself. And it actually grieves God. It grieves God very much, you know. So Israel did evil uh, in the Lord's sight, you know. And uh, the Lord was... Uh, uh, God is angry and God is uh, upset, you know, that uh, such thing has happened because it's an abomination, all right? So, uh, and then the, the, the judges came and 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 Ophniel is the, is, is the first judge uh, from, from, from the book of Judges, you know, judges. And, and there is this gap here, okay? And between this gap after Ophniel, uh, Israel, again, did evil. Huh? And what happened is that King Eglon of Moab came and conquered uh, Israel, and there was actually oppression and famine. 
and they had this for 18 years. And in between, uh, that's where uh, there was uh, this this person called Ali Malek and, uh, and, and Naomi, they emigrate. They move from Bethlehem to uh, um, uh, this um, Moab itself, you know, and that's where the book of Ruth begins itself. Okay, so this it's a dark time, dark moments uh, in Israel, and it is also a period uh, of disobedience and spiritual decline in Israel. People turn to pagan worship, uh, Baal and Asaraf. Actually, Baal is the is the masculine uh, pagan god, uh, and Asaraf is the feminine and. And in their belief is that these two gods actually uh, have a sexual relationship, right? And then out comes uh, the product of this is uh, uh, the, the prosperity, you know, of their crops, uh, uh, the blessing, uh, providence itself. So this is the pagan belief itself. Uh, and instead of, uh, uh, of course, for the Israelite, instead of the one true God himself, all right? And the famine, the famine that happens, all right, the background, the famine that happens is that... Uh, is because the consequence of their sin. Uh, Amos 4 uh, actually described this. All right? And uh, interestingly also, if you have your Bible, you turn uh, one page before Ruth 1, you will see the last uh, chapter and the last verse, it begins with this statement. It says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. And everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Okay? All right? So let's read the uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And this is how it goes, okay? It says, In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Kilion, okay? They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Emphasis on the word they settled there. So we know, right, it is actually uh, a famine. And of course, famine means no food, lah, right? Uh, and Eli Melech chose to leave and go to the land of their enemy, a land also that people worship pagan gods, right? And to look for food, obviously, you know. But the the key thing here is that uh, he settled there. He chose to live there, huh? and 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 we know that Bethlehem. Huh? He, he chose to leave. Huh? He lived. He lived Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Okay, right. So uh, Elimelech relocates his family uh, to Moab, and and he do this because of food. Uh, and it's for a purpose of self-preservation, you know. So, so there is nowhere, just now as we read the verse, uh, there is nowhere in the Bible that it says that Elimelech emigrate uh, because God tells him to. Uh, he, he, he move on, he, he, he changed location because he had a dream or he had the angel appeared to him, you know. So Elimelech chose this uh, decision to emigrate was all on his own choice, you know. Proverbs 3, 5, verse 6, it says that uh, we are to trust the Lord with uh, all our heart and not to depend on your own understanding. Uh, we are to seek His will in all you do and God, and He will show you which path to take. In fact, there's another verse in Psalms, Psalms 37, 25, it says that we are to commit everything we do to the Lord, to trust Him, and he will help you. Amen? Okay, so if we ask this question, should we follow Elimelech's example? Uh, the answer is obviously no. Lah. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, in fact, uh, Elimelech, he has, there's a famine in Bethlehem, all right? Uh, there was hardship that he faced. Uh, he reacted, you know, and perhaps he followed uh his old strategies, you know, instead of trusting the Lord that he will provide, yes, uh, it's a dark time in Israel, you know, so he chose to uh, 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 run away, you know, from, from the house of bread. And just now we saw that Jesus is the bread of life. Huh? 
So if we were to ask ourselves, you know, uh, when we are faced with hardship, do we uh, run away uh, from God? Or do we trust Him? Do we uh, run away from church? Or do we take the opportunity uh, to come to church, to attend a CG, uh, to, to go to the youth meeting, you know, if you're a youth here, you know, to attend uh, the Chinese uh, church itself, you know, to listen, to trust Him, okay? Or uh, when we are tempted to God, you know, uh, by, I mean, tempted uh, by, by the, our current situation, uh, uh, we are we look we we look into different uh, uh, comparisons. Uh, the grass is greener on the other side. So so here's the situation whereby Elimelech saw Israel or Bethlehem. Obviously, in famine time there is no food, right? And in the land of Moab, there's plenty. So the grass is greener on the other side, and obviously it is the right logical decision to do, and he moves. And because of Elimelech's decision to go to Moab, uh, Naomi, his wife, ended up in the desperate situation, actually. You know? so, so what is the desperate situation that he has? Then uh, that Naomi ended up, uh, in verse 3, it says, Then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpa, and the other woman, the other, a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Malon and Kilion died. And this left, the Bible says, this left Naomi alone. Because without her two sons, uh, I mean, without her two sons or husband. All right? So, Elimelech died. Uh, Naomi is left vulnerable uh, in the foreign land. And we see that Naomi's situation uh, worsens from bad to worse, and it becomes a desperate situation. Okay? Let's continue. Uh, verse 6. But something happened. Huh? Something happened. Something uh, amazing happened. Uh, the Bible says, Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord, that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. Alright? So, so, you remember that diagram just now? So, what happened was that uh, Ophniel, and then there is this King Eglon, and the new judge, Ehud, uh, uh, the people repented, uh, the people repented of their sins. Uh, so the Lord raised a new judge, Ehud, and he came and he rescued uh, the situation, and he became a judge for Israel for the next 80 years. Okay, So with that new uh, judge, the, uh, Israel enjoyed peace again. But also the famine stops. The famine stops and, and, and the land begins to generate good crops again. Huh? And somehow or other, Naomi managed to hear uh, this good news. All right? And the word hear here, heard here, is actually uh, not just, you know, I, I listen, then after that, I don't hear anymore. I left ears, right ear. Huh? It is actually an active hearing with obedience and also a call to action. So the word here, when Naomi heard, there was a call to action. And this is what uh, she did, you know. She, so Naomi, the Bible says, so Naomi and her daughters-in-law get ready, got ready to leave Moab. The call to action. Huh? So she leave Moab to return to her homeland, right? This, this story is just like the prodigal son, right? You know, so uh, upon realizing uh, there is a moment of repentance, uh, uh, that this uh, the, the prodigal son returned back uh, to his father's house again. So Naomi heard uh, what the good things are uh, that the Lord has done, uh, and there is good crops again. And she decided, you know, to go back. All right, okay. And I theme this part here is that hearing the word is all that matters for us, right? And and why is this important? Because when Naomi hears this in the act of obedience and also unbeknownst to Naomi, there is a new judge, right, that, that arises, okay? And in this decision, okay, unknowingly of her decision, uh, Naomi is unaware that his, uh, her decision together with Ruth going back to uh, uh, Bethlehem sparks one of history's greatest lineage, right? 
because uh, Ruth later will marry Boaz, you see, uh, from the, the, the other uh, speaker will speak of uh, in the various weeks later. And then Boaz, uh, uh, together with Ruth, marriage gave birth to Obed, Obed to Jesse, and Jesse to King David himself. And we know, right, uh, 40 generations after King David is, uh, is the Lord Jesus himself, you know. And it comes from that decision of a simple obedience to what uh, Naomi has heard about the good news, you know, about what uh, the good things uh, in the land of uh, or the house of bread, uh, Bethlehem is happening again, you know. So could this be a sign of uh, Naomi renewed trust in God? The answer is yes, right? So are you hearing uh, the word of God in the same time when you are faced with challenges today? Uh, I trust that you uh, will respond uh, the same as how uh, Naomi responded, okay? The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, it says that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, okay? Uh, in another translation, uh, it says faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ, okay? I like the message translation. It says that the point is before you trust you have to listen. You have to hear. Correct? But unless Christ's word is preached, uh, big letter word there, you know, to which we are actually learning here, the word of God, you know. But unless you hear the word of God, then there's nothing to listen to. Lah. Correct? Lah? No? Okay. So uh, I'm actually encouraged, you know, that uh, in our church, uh, uh, we have uh, a sister, you know, that actually uh, went through uh, a period of uh, uh, difficulties. And I believe that it is, upon hearing her testimony, you know, I believe that it is also a time of uh, despair and also trouble, you know. And uh, she's none other uh, uh, than Sister Being himself. I'm sure some of you has, or many of you have watched her YouTube uh, video that actually uh, described her testimony. I'm not going to say, say much, but she's here today. So I'm just going to ask her to unmute herself. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, Bean, can you share your testimony? Uh, how does this relate to you also? Huh? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Uh, can you all hear me? Yeah, good. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, um, as I listen to Pastor Sam's uh, sharing, I'm, I'm actually very touched. Uh, he asked me to prepare a, a short sharing. I think a lot of uh, my sharing will be really like uh, agreeing with what he preached today. So, um. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Bing. Um, so actually like last year around the same time as now, I was actually diagnosed um uh, with cancer. So um it was rare, it was aggressive, and it was non-reactive to radio or chemo. So meaning the only uh option left is to cut and cut and cut until they cannot cut. And um so the treatment suggested by the doctor at that time. Uh, was a major operation, 12 hours, and then at least uh, seven days in ICU. Um, basically, they just suggest to remove the whole the whole roof, the whole pallet roof. Um, first, they say cut like this, and then they say cut like that. And, you know, like, I will look different. I will not be able to function the same, maybe, after the treatment. Um, but I have to decide quickly because... Um, since the only option is to cut, so the longer they wait, um, the, the cancer cells might spread. And um, so you have to act fast. But um, on top of that, um, uh, the, the doctor also highlighted uh, that yeah, like, um, even though if I accept this treatment, um, the chances of the cancer coming back is actually very high, um, 85 to 90%. Um, it's almost certain, uh, or is already, or uh, already in my lungs, because it's also known to attack the lungs. So if that is the case, then um we cannot cut the lungs. So um basically it's like quite, quite bad uh, yeah. And then um, but at that moment actually it was a pre preliminary um uh, biopsy. So what the doctor say is confirmed, uh cancerous. But uh, they need a little bit more time to put a dye uh, to confirm what, what, or which strain. So it's like 
a more aggressive or less aggressive one, but still quite aggressive. So since he said uh, it's a not the final report, right? So I was like, just ask him and say, um, no, like since it's not, not the last report, so could it be any possibility that the final report will come back and you know, like change last minute from cancerous to benign? So the doctor gave me a very definite no. That's the answer. And um, you know, like God is very good. Um, in you know, like two months before the diagnosis, he actually gave me the desire to sign up for gospel partner for with NCC. So with the the subscription, I came to with a uh, unlimited access to twenty years of archive of messages. So what happened was before the diagnosis, I actually was listening to messages like when morning I go to work, I'll listen. And after wait on, on the way home, I will listen to another one. So I have been listening for two months. So like what Pastor Sam just mentioned just now, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the words of God. So the diagnosis was really bad. But um but amazingly I, I actually did not feel like it was it hit me, but I somehow it was worse than what I can imagine. I was shaking, I was really fearful. But deep down I also believe that Jesus can heal me. Yeah. Um but you must understand that it's not easy in the natural for me to believe with that kind of diagnosis and also the fact that actually my mom passed away um due to cancer when I was quite young. So it was actually deep down at the back of my mind, it was my worst fear to have to die of cancer and leaving my child uh, young and for my family to go through the same kind of, um, you know, the ordeal of watching the mom dying slowly, you know, and to, at the end, you know, like many financially also, you know, uh, will be drained as well for the treatment. So I, I still remember walking out from the hospital and then I was telling my husband, uh, my only hope of surviving this is for Jesus to heal me. And from that day onwards, I ran to Jesus. I literally ran to Jesus because I ran to him, I draw from him, I rest in him because no one could comfort me. No one could help me. And I could only find peace in the word. I read the Bible, I continue listening to messages, you know, I pray and I partake Holy Communion every day. You know, when you are facing death, no one can be there with you. Not even your closest one, not even your spouse, but Jesus can be there. I know Psalm 23, that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil for you are with me. And during that period, I, I actually enjoyed the closeness with Jesus so much so that at one point even before my miracles uh, healing I was actually telling my husband you know what it's actually not all bad I'm actually really enjoying this kind of I'm not supposed to have peace I'm not supposed to feel you know like happy during that time but I actually was actually experiencing this peace so much that I was telling him that it's actually not all bad um and I'm, I still think it's actually a blessing to have actually experienced that kind of closeness um, and to learn to depend on Jesus uh, completely. And what the devil actually intended to destroy me, um, Jesus can actually turn it around and turn it into a blessing. So my part, one of my miracle was actually um, what the doctor said, the report cannot change. But when I went, uh, I didn't share this in my te the recorded testimony, but um, actually every time when I partake Holy Communion, I will actually declare, I say all the cancer cells die. Um, and also those cancer cells in the lab die, you know, because of Jesus' uh, finished work. So I believe there's a reason why the, the doctor at the end couldn't get the result. Because at first they already said confirm, they just need to put the dye and everything. But when I came, went back, they it was telling me, you know, like, it was three weeks, you know, three weeks after biopsy, by right, they should have already have a result. They were still telling me, oh, sorry, I cannot get a result. Um, when I asked him what happened, he said it could be benign. But uh, when I pressed forward, I said, I thought you said it's not possible to change. And then he actually just said, you know, isn't it better now? 
that you're actually having a chance of changing the report, but he told me that it could still be cancerous, but asked me to wait. But when finally they came back and said they cannot prove it to be cancerous, the first word the doctor says is your, your, your prayer has been answered. Mm. But I actually didn't check uh, the second part of my testimony because uh, in the report, the exact word in the report, it says um, likely benign but difficult uh, interpretation advise complete addition for assessment. So I think I praise God also. He gave me a very good doctor. Um, despite the uh, advice from the lab to take more samples, he, he actually uh, tell me, you know, we just observed because um, we already took the whole tumor. It's quite big. So if they cannot prove it's cancerous, then we observe because he said a cancerous wound cannot heal. So um, we observe. Uh, so during the period of observation, right, um, I, I never, I never looked into the mirror and look at my wound. Even like when I brush teeth, you know, I, if I see blood and everything, I will just uh, ignore it and I don't want, I refuse to look at it because every time when I look at it, you know, like my face, you drop and I will be looking at the circumstances. So I just want to continue to hang on to Jesus' report that I'm healed. And when I went back to another follow up, so the doctor was there asking, you know, is there any bleeding and all? I said, no. Then when he put in the scope to see and Put it on the monitor there's a, actually the second miracle so we couldn't find where is the wound and it was completely healed but um just give you some background because before the first surgery to remove the whole thing uh, because it was already pushing into the bone so when they removed they actually removed everything revealing the bone so the doctor actually told me um even if like it's benign it will not heal pretty like, it will still leave scar so when we went back, we couldn't find, we couldn't tell which one is the healthy one because everything looked perfectly healthy. So he even like wear a glove and put his hand inside and try to, to feel it. So remember like, um, because the chances of the, the um, cancer coming back is so uh, high, right? So even if I go through the major operation, I still need to go back every month to monitor. But with Jesus healing me actually, the doctor actually told me like he has no reason to see me any anymore because it's completely healed. Like I think throughout these whole things, I I've learned to really trust God, and I'm just like even now I'm, I just recall the uh the whole thing. I'm still like really touched by how much God loves me and loves all of us. So He really loves loves us so much, and He's able to do all things. You know, all things are possible through God. So I just want to encourage everyone, if you have any problems, you know, uh, be it your work, be it your children, be it finances, or be it health, um, run to Jesus, run to him. Um, and always treat yourself with his words, uh, spending time with him. Um, you know, like Proverbs 4, 20, 22, you know, your eyes gate, your ear gates, and your heart, you must always guide it, uh, guide it, you know, like, you know, incline your ears into saying, let them not depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart because they are life and for those who find them and help to all their, their flesh. So I think that's all my sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, wow. Okay. What an amazing uh, testimony there, right? Uh, I would like to encourage all of you. Her testimony is actually recorded in the YouTube. Uh, go check out the uh, uh, TNCC's uh, YouTube channel and uh, pass the testimony around and uh, perhaps it can encourage uh, someone as it has encouraged you today. Okay. Uh, amazing, right? Uh, she did not choose to look into the problems. I remember she was brushing teeth and all the bleeding, all this stuff, going to look into the mirror. She doesn't look into the problems, but uh, continue to feed on the word of Christ, on the good news about Christ, on the word of God itself, you know, and that's where the miracles start to happen. Similarly, right, it's uh, uh, to 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 Naomi, you know, she she hears the word, right, and there was an action that she she does also, right. She got ready to leave Moab, and then she returned to her homeland, uh, uh, despite the current situation, which is actually she is in desperation. Remember, she's the only Jew living in Moab. Uh, in the land of enemy itself. In fact, her two daughter-in-laws, uh, Orpa and Ruth, 
they're actually more advice, you know. It's only her, you know. So she's vulnerable to uh, many other things herself. But she made the decision, okay? Verse 7, uh, as we look at the screen now, okay? With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. I like that, right? You still remember the map? You know, uh, I think it's maybe probably with the trajectory, uh, 70, 80 kilometers, something like that, okay? And they and they took the road that would lead them uh, not to elsewhere, but back home. And I like that, you know, uh, 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 the word Judah is that. Judah means praise. Uh, if you recall, uh, I think it was uh, the last session uh, when I shared, you know, in, in any things that you do, choose praise. Choose to sing to the Lord, right? Uh, in anything that in your situation, choose to praise the Lord, you know. Uh, engage your emotions, engage your, your, your vocal cords uh, to focus on the Lord by praising him okay all right let's continue huh? and verse 8 huh? but on the way but on the way Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law now we do not know how long they have traveled probably halfway or maybe a quarter but Naomi uh, who, is, who, who is still in grief uh, turned to the daughters lord and says this huh? go back to your mother's home and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your uh, to your husbands and to me May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. So Naomi, of course, she's in. She's grieving. Huh? Uh, she turned to both of them and says that, look, uh, uh, why are you still following me? Huh? Why don't you go back? Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm a foreigner in Moab. If you follow me, you are Moabites. You come to uh, uh, Israel, you are also a foreigner. So this is what the Bible records. It says, Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No, they said. Both of them, uh, Orpa and uh, Ruth said, No, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Why should you go with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' home. For I'm too old to marry again. And if it were possible, I and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? You Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course. Of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me. The word bitter here, and I especially want to note this, uh, uh, Naomi is not bitter against God. Uh. She's just basically describing a situation whereby it is very susa, uh, very, very, very kanko uh, in, in Hokkien, uh, very, very difficult right now, you know, uh, for her life, you know. So, and 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 the next thing that which Naomi say is is just a description of her opinion of her life, uh, but not the opinion of how God looks at her okay and have, and 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 has the, the plan for her and this is what she says huh? he says that things are far more bitter for me than for you because the lord himself has raised his fist against me again that's naomi's uh, perception itself so naomi is definitely in bitterness but she still chose to journey uh to go back okay uh and she urged opa and ruth to return right despite uh, they are, has begun their, their, their journey, okay? And she's bitter, uh, possibly because of the calamities, uh, the passing away of her husband, uh, Marlon Kilion, you know, uh, because of their disobedience leaving Bethlehem. And despite her bitterness, she still wants to return to God in repentance, knowing that the answer uh, is drawing, uh, knowing the answer is drawing closer to him, not going further away from God himself. So her act of, of, of uh, uh, return is actually an act of uh, repentance itself. All right? But here's the thing. Uh, after she says this thing, uh, remember two of them say no, uh, uh, but suddenly there is another turn of events. Okay, uh, They all wept together, but one of them, uh, Orpa, kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But the Bible records, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to, and to her gods. You should do the same. 
right? Roof, roof clung tightly, roof clings on, right? It shows actually a statement of faith that uh, we're going to look into, okay? Remember, Ruth is also widowed. She refused to abandon uh, Naomi, okay? And, and, and this is what happens, uh, verse 16. Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. And Ruth said this. He says, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there will be, I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Amazing, right? Remember the name Ruth? It means friendship. It means a friend, a faithful friend. Isn't it amazing that uh, Ruth mentioned this, that she will go wherever uh, Ruth, I mean, uh, Naomi, her mother-in-law goes to. You know, the Bible says uh, in Proverbs uh, or in Psalms 1717, uh, uh, 17, it says that uh, uh, well, uh, it says that uh, a friend loves at all times, you know. A friend will cling on to you. A, a friend will help you. And isn't it Ruth living out of her uh, reality of her, her character uh, and her name itself, okay? So, uh, we are we are amazed here as we look into Ruth's uh, declaration, uh, which is actually a statement of faith. Remember, Ruth is a Moabite. She's going back to a place of uncertainty. Yeah? And yet, she is clinging on to this. And he says that, look, Naomi, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Okay, And Ruth is also leaving a familiar world for an unknown future. And she's solely trusting uh, the God of Israel, the God of Naomi itself. Okay, let's continue. Uh, verse 18. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them continued their journey. And when they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. The entire town was excited to receive uh, the return of Naomi and, of course, uh, Ruth herself also. And uh, the Bible records, is this Naomi? Someone asked, you know. Uh, but look at how Naomi responded. Okay. Naomi says, don't call me Naomi. He said, instead, call me Mara. For the, again, uh, up from her description of herself, for the Almighty God has, uh, has made life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? You know, sometimes I think uh, bitterness or a situation in life that grieves us and put us into despair uh, and our, the result of our emotion in bitterness can distract us from our identity, our true identity. I like what being shared just now. Did you, did you manage to catch it? I refuse to look into the nothing wrong in the mirror, you know. <laughs> but I refuse to do that because that will actually give me a distraction of my identity. Uh, right? My identity is that I'm already healed. I am uh, God has good plans for me. He, uh, he will uh, He will restore me. You know, He will He will heal me. You know, what a, what is the distraction that you have uh, to your identity today? You know, can we learn from this situation? You know, uh, yes, we can pour out our hearts. In fact, in fact, the Lord allow us to pour out our emotions, our despair moments. You know, just like uh, David, you know, in the Book of Psalms records huge amounts of songs. Uh, some mean songs, okay. Huge amounts of records that David poured out, but you know what? 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 What we observe, and what you observe is that in every part of David's uh, 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 that he poured out. You know, in fact, he 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 did mention God. Why have you left me? Why why am I in trouble? You know, uh, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm a nobody. You know, but he always ends in the statement of faith, a declaration of faith, and says that you know, my God. Whom I can trust, you know, my God, my 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 Redeemer, my 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 champion, you know, uh, uh, my my faithful provider, you know. 
there's something that we can learn here, okay? All right, that it is not to be distracted uh, uh, from our identity itself. The book of Psalms uh, 30, uh, verse 5, it says that for God's anger only lasts a moment, right? If there is a sin, there is a, a, a disobedience, uh, uh, yes, situations uh, may turn unfavorable uh, in, in, in the aspect of, of uh, Elimelech and his family, uh, but, but we are to be encouraged by God's favor lasts a lifetime. Uh, his favor for our life is a lifetime. And today, because of Jesus, which is in earth, and he has bought us with a price uh, through uh, the work on the cross itself, uh, we have been redeemed, and today we enjoy a lifetime of favor. Weeping, you know, may last through the night, but there is a certainty that joy comes with the morning. As certain as the sun will rise, joy comes, rejoice, you know, a, a, a celebration. Uh, is certain. And we saw that right just now that uh, when Naomi returned, uh, there is a celebration uh, of people welcoming her back. Uh, they were so glad to see her. Okay. So the last verse, okay, this is the last verse uh, uh, of, uh, of today, uh, chapter one. So Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by her daughter in law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. Amen? Okay? So, in closing, uh, uh, there's three points here I'd like to highlight. The first thing is that I want you all to know that God is working behind the scenes. We saw that in the story of Naomi just now, that Naomi couldn't know the uh, amazing turn of events uh, that was about to be orchestrated by God. Uh. Though she felt abandoned, you know, God is working out a path of blessing and redemption for her. We're going to see that for chapter 2, uh, 3, and 4, right? That how this thing unfolds, you know, is a very exciting moment. So this reminds us, uh, it reminds you and me, uh, that uh, even when we cannot see or feel uh, uh, things around us in the moment of despair, despair or discouragement, God is still active, uh, working in our life. Secondly, God has a master plan. As you are God's masterpiece, he has a master plan for you. The same, right, unbeknownst to Naomi, you know, her journey uh, was part of God orchestrating a remarkable lineage. Do you think she know by going back to the house of bread again? Do you think she knows that uh, she's going to meet Boaz? No, she doesn't know. Do you think she knows that she's going to be chanced upon to glean the barley uh, on the fields again? No, she doesn't know. Uh, and then she's going to give birth to uh, a son called Obed and then a grandfather and a great-grandfather, a uh, great-grandmother, sorry, great-grandmother of uh, King David. No, she doesn't know, you know. So everyone, you know, when you look into this, when you turn back to God, when you return, God has great plans for you, your life, your descendants itself, your family, you see. So, Rule faithfulness is not only secured her future, right? But ultimately, uh, the birth of King David and of course, Jesus Christ. Uh. So what, what's the take home here in God's master plan? God has plans that is far greater than we can imagine. And lastly, you know, God uses natural events to accomplish supernatural outcome. It's a natural event that happens, right? Things happen in the world. Bad news happen here and there. Uh, even in your workplace or maybe in the family, uh, somebody passed away, you know, uh, a health report that is, that it gives you, a, uh, put you in a desperate situation. Don't run away from God. Don't flee from God. Elimelech did, you know, because of famine, because of famine, a desperate situation. Secondly, don't, uh, don't run away but turn to God. You know why? Because all is not lost. Yes, uh, you may not have uh, the best of things around you, you know, uh, uh, things are greater from, from the perspective of comparison, you know, but you know, in God's uh, uh, economy, in God's perspective, all is not lost. Why? Because all things work together for good to those who love Him and to those who are called 
for its purpose. I'd like to end this with this verse here, again, uh, in Psalms 37, verse 5. It says here, commit everything you do to the Lord. Everything, everything means everything. Uh, despair moments, happiness, you know, a time of, uh, even today, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow? Commit everything to the Lord. And I want to encourage you to trust God. You know why? Because He, uh, He is going to and He will help you. Amen? Okay? So I hope, uh, yeah, I made it on time. Okay, so uh, this is the, the end of the sharing today. I pass uh, the time now back to you, Pastor Susan. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Pastor Sam. And thanks also to uh, Being for coming in and sharing your incredible uh, testimony with us tonight. I know many of us have heard the testimony, but uh, it's so encouraging to hear it again. Uh, and what a good what a good lessons we've gained tonight um, from Ruth chapter one. So you can tell it's going to be a, a great series. There's so much to learn, so much that will encourage you uh, and build you up during this series. So, so far, I've only seen in the chats, um, you know, some of you uh, uh, praising God for the testimony that you've heard tonight. You're encouraged by that. Uh, some amens pouring in from the teaching earlier. Uh, if you do have any questions, I'll give you just like one one minute, okay, to put in the questions before we call it a night. Uh, and I do want to remind you again uh, that this series is a five-week uh, series. So this is week number one. So you have another four sessions, okay, to gain so much uh, that we can out of the story of, of Ruth. Uh, so I believe tonight uh, would have spoken to you on some different uh, levels, maybe from different people, uh, some of the lessons and some of the, the things that Pastor Sam pulled out of there. Uh, really powerful and as well strengthen it with being's testimony uh, just reminding us so much how important it is to hear to hear all of these decisions you know that Naomi and Ruth made it started from hearing something so how hearing the word of God really affects us so thank you so much to all of you because you've been hearing okay when you join Wednesday nights uh, you're hearing the word and we believe that that um, affects you builds up your faith and helps you to make uh, step out in faith and make the decisions, you know, and follow what God has for your life. So is there any questions uh, tonight? I don't see anything yet. Um, I think it was super clear then, uh, Pastor Sam, no, no questions. Thank you so much for that background as well. I think that was really great. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone, this is recorded. It will be posted on, on YouTube again. Uh, the, sometimes those backgrounds, we're not sure when we're reading the Bible, you know, we, we for, kind of forget where things are placed. Uh, so I think that was a really helpful background to help you understand the backstory and what is happening in a bigger picture uh, around, around Naomi and around Ruth in this story. Uh, so I think it was a helpful evening uh, for myself, an encouraging evening for myself. I hope it was for all of you as well. Uh, so since there's no questions, I guess the only thing left to do is for you to turn on your video so I get to see you uh, one last time uh, before we call it a night. Uh, and there's being as well. So thanks again, being for coming in and sharing uh, your testimony tonight. All right. I can see so many of you smiley faces uh, as you're about to end the evening. All right. In that case, we'll see you next Wednesday at 830. Of course, we'll see you with all the other events in between and Sunday mornings to worship and celebrate together. Uh, but to continue this series, we'll see you next Wednesday at 830. Now that you have your videos on, you're also allowed to unmute yourself at this point in the evening and shout out a thanks to Pastor Sam for teaching us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Thank Sam. Thank you, B. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Sam. Thanks, Pastor Thank Susan. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Shalom, shalom. So glad. Oh.